Uh, in this video, we're gonna learn the 24 way. In order to give you motivating questions, let me ask you the following questions. Question number one. Uh, what is the number of functions f from the set n to k? What is the function number of functions? And question number two, what is the number of injective uh, functions f from n to k? And number three, what is the number of surjective functions? from n to k and fourth question what is the number of bijective functions from n to k uh, so let me ans uh, consider the first question let's consider the first question so a function let me recall you a function from n to k means a way of assigning an element y in this set for each element in n and in this case we write Uh, we write uh, f of x equals y. So, so function is a way to assigning a number like this. And so in, if, in order to find the number of functions from n to k, we need to compute the number of ways to assign f1. Uh, not Okay, uh, so number of ways to decide f of 1 is equal to n because this can be any number in this set bracket n. And same, by the same reason, number of ways to decide f of 2 is also n. Number of ways to decide f of n is also equal to n. So, uh, okay, I think I made a mistake. They are all k instead of one instead of instead of uh, n because f one uh, is in k, which is uh, the set of k elements. So. There are k possibilities for f1, k possibilities for f2, and k possibilities for fn. So the number of functions uh, from n to k is of course equal to the product of them, which is two, uh, k to the n. This answers the first question. Now let's consider the second question, a2. So, a function f is uh, injection injective if the following holds the condition following condition holds. The condition is that if f of x, uh, if two elements in n are different, then the function values are different. So we cannot have common values of f for different values. So in order to def 
de determine the number of injective functions, we can do the same thing, number of ways to decide the first value f of 1 is equal to k because there are k possibilities but once f1 is decided number of ways to decide the next value f of 2 is now k minus 1 because f1 cannot be f2 f2 cannot be f1 and the number of ways to decide f of 3 is k minus 2 etc and the number of ways to decide the last value is k minus n plus 1 so the number of injective functions from uh, f from n to k is equal to the product of these numbers this is also written in the following notation k super n bar and it's called a falling factorial so this is just a notation this is just a notation for uh, this number so this is the number of injective functions okay so the next a3 and of course subject subjection a function f is surjective if uh, the following condition holds mm, for every y in k there exists there is an element x in n such that f of x equals y. So this is the definition of a surjective function. And we will compute uh, the number of number of surjective functions later. This is more difficult than the previous two questions. We will do this later. will be uh, computed later and what about a4 number of a function f is called bijective if it is uh, surjective and injective and it is easy to see that uh, bijection biject means a bijective function a bijection exists if and only if n is equal to k otherwise does not exist so if in this case f is a bijection is bijective if and only if it is injective or surjective it is injective and we know the number of injective functions the number of bijection or bijective functions bijective function from n to n is equal to n falling factorial which is n factorial so uh, number of bijective functions so number of bijective functions f from n to k is either n factorial if n equals k and 0 otherwise so we know uh, we can answer this question like this now we will uh, consider this in a slightly different context mm, 
So, let's observe this observation. A function f from n to k can be understood as a way of this distributing n balls into k boxes so for example uh, suppose so, uh, so for example suppose that uh, f is a function like this so I'm gonna consider this function one two three four five so suppose the f is a function like this one goes to two two goes to one three goes to two four goes to four and this can be understood as follows we have four or uh, five boxes uh, labeled by one two three four five and this one goes to two means this is a ball ball one goes into box two so there is ball one in box two and ball two is in box two a uh, box one because f of two equals one and three ball three is in box two and ball four is in box four like this so this is really a distribution of the balls into the boxes so the questions f1 through a uh, q1 through q4 are really a uh, distribution problems okay now uh, we uh, change the situation a little bit situation a little bit as far well, like so that uh, boxes balls or boxes are identical so in the previous example boxes are labeled one two three etc balls are labeled one etc two etc so the balls are all distinct and boxes are all distinct but we can consider when boxes are identical or the balls are identical. So, for instance, in the for instance, uh, what is the number of the question can be like this: What is the number of ways to distribute? five balls into say uh, three boxes where the balls are identical and the boxes are distinct so this can be a one possibility. So the box three boxes are distinct, so we label them with inte uh, integers. But five balls are distinct, uh, identical. So we don't label them. So but we just put them, put the boxes, uh, put the balls into boxes. This is one way. And one, two, three. This can be another way, so maybe one, two, three, something like that. These two are distinct, uh, these different ways of doing this. There are more and more and more, and we want to compute number of such ways, and we will do this later. And similarly, as functions, we will call 
a distribution of balls into boxes. This distribution injective, uh, injective, surjective like functions or bijective. And just imagine uh, the balls and boxes from functions. So injective here means every box has at, at most one ball. It can be empty, but it has some that it should be just one. Surjective means every box has at least one ball. No box is empty. And bijective means every box has exactly one ball. Okay, so we can uh, cons consider the number of ways to distribute n balls into k boxes with some properties where balls are distinct, boxes are distinct, and injective, something like that. And moreover, we will consider a more situation. If the balls are distinct, sometimes we want to consider the order of the balls in each box. We can consider, we can also uh, consider that uh, the order of the balls in each box uh, matters. So for instance, imagine uh, that the boxes are very narrow. So it's like this. Suppose that the boxes are narrow like this. Let's say the boxes are distinct. Balls are also distinct. And the balls 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, uh, 6, and 7, something like this. So because the box is very narrow, each ball of the of, you can contain just one ball in each layer say and this in this situation we will consider this distribution is distinct is different from this this uh, distribution so three one two and four five six and seven even though every box box number one has the same balls in each situation, like one, two, four in each, but we consider them this different because the order of the balls matters. So the order in the left side, in the the ball, in the, the order of the balls in box one in the left side is two, one, four, and the right side is one, two, four. The order matters. So these two are distinct. So we will sometimes, we can also consider the order of the balls in each box, only when the balls are distinct. Okay, now in summary, I'm gonna make a table. So it's called a 20 fold way. So balls, the situations, balls, boxes and order there are three situations or three or many any function or distribution and surjective distribution injective distribution and bijective distribution Where he, here is. Let me draw like this. Uh, 
this and here distinct distinct and distinct identical the boys are identical boxes are distinct and both are identical and order doesn't matter order doesn't matter and here up to this point we have like up to this point uh, we have uh, three times we have th uh, four times four uh, cells here so there are four 16 problems over here and we will also consider when balls are distinct uh, boxes distinct uh, identical the order matters in the two rows in the bottom so let me draw a little horizontal line so that we can really see the cells that we are considering so here I've created like uh, six or uh, six rows uh, four columns so 4 times 6 equals 24 cells over here but we don't really uh, care about these four cells because when the order matters that means each box inject if it's injective there is at most one box one ball in each box in this case or, or injective or bijective at most one ball so that means order so order doesn't really matter does not matter so we don't we are not gonna consider these four cases because the order doesn't really matter so remaining things here we have 20 things so these are the things that we want to consider in fact we computed uh, the number of functions or distribution from uh, n boxes so, so number of this is basically number of ways to distribute n balls into k boxes for each given situation and we computed that the number of ways to place n balls into k boxes when both boxes and balls are distinct here we know that it's k to the n and for injective we know that it's k falling factorial n and so we have filled these two entries and later on we will try to fill the remaining entries right here Okay, this is the end of the video. Thank you.